Welcome everybody to our explainer video on the OECD NCP complaint mechanism and our experience using it. My name is Tabitha Payne. Um, and my name is Mamela Musiana. We both work for Open Secrets, which is a South African civil society organization working on economic uh, crime and human rights. Apartheid Guns and Money, A Tale of Profit, uncovered a lot of evidence of corporate complicity with Apartheid. This included the evidence of two banks' complicity in Apartheid crimes. These two banks were Credit Bank Group in Belgium, known as KBC, and Credit Bank Luxembourg, also known as KBL. The evidence shows how they facilitated covert payments to help get weapons to South Africa illegally. Open Secrets and CULS have thus sought to hold KBC and KBL to account using the OECD NCP mechanism. This mechanism is tasked with holding big corporations to account for human rights violations. Everything we're going to talk about here today is documented on our website, www.opensecrets.org.za. So you can download and read our original complaint as well as all the responses and our fact sheets and the NCP's responses. We lodged a complaint in April 2018. The response from the banks was largely technical, where they disagreed with our interpretation of the guidelines for multinational corporations. None of these arguments were ever accepted by the NCPs. In June 2018, Open Secrets discovered a conflict of interest in the Belgian NCP. The NCP decision-making body is made up of business, trade unions and government representatives. Open Secrets discovered that two of the business federations involved in deciding whether or not to investigate the complaint against KBC in fact have senior representatives from KBC Group in their federations. What this means is that KBC would in fact be deciding whether or not to investigate itself. There is no way that an impartial decision could be reached in such a situation. Open Secrets and CALS brought this to the attention of the NCPs and the OECD Secretary General time and time again. And despite recommendations by the Secretary General, the Belgian NCP decided to ignore this fundamental flaw and proceed, thereby compromising the entire process. One year later, the NCPs gave us their draft initial assessment. The NCPs had initially indicated that they would provide an initial assessment within three months. It took, it took a year with multiple delays to get their initial assessment. Bear in mind, the initial assessment is just determining whether or not there is sufficient evidence to proceed with further in investigation. We are disturbed by the lack of engagement, particularly around the extensive documentary evidence that we submitted to support our complaint. The Belgian NCP, in particular, provided a mere three pages of feedback over a period, after a period of, of a year of postponements from them. The biggest contention was around the evidence that we relied on. This included three expert affidavits, including one from former OECD chairperson on the Working Group on Bribery, Professor Mark Peeth, and two others from global banking and accounting experts. There was also an amicus submission from UN independent expert Juan Pablo Bohoslavsky. He argued that the case was important and should be considered. Finally, over 40,000 documents from national archives amongst other evidence provided to the NCPs by Open Secrets and CALS. Yet, the NCPs in their initial assessments seemed to ignore the evidence provided, while saying that it was insufficient. Another issue the NCPs had was that they thought the crime of apartheid happened too long ago. Apparently, the crime of apartheid, which is a crime against humanity, expires after some indeterminable time for the NCPs. This, even though in international law there is no statute of limitations for crimes against humanity. The NCPs went even further and actually created their own defences for the banks. For example, that they might not have known about the money laundering 
that the bank said that they could not produce evidence, and so, ach shame, how could they be asked to? To say that a reason for not investigating a complaint is because the banks accused of these serious human rights violations cannot produce evidence to refute the evidence brought against them, even though we know that these banks are in a better position to produce this evidence rather than a small NGO, is plainly bizarre. This statement, coming from what is supposed to be an impartial accountability mechanism, is truly concerning. After receiving the NCP's draft initial assessments, Open Secrets and CALS provided the NCPs with a detailed response. This dealt with, point by point, any concerns raised by the NCPs as well as our concerns. Yet, nothing changed between the draft initial assessment and the final. Not a single thing. What is obvious from this is that not only did the NCPs ignore almost all of the evidence provided to them, but then they ignored it for a second time, as well as our concerns and arguments. They very clearly did not apply their minds. While saddened by the fatally flawed NCP process, Open Secrets is exploring every possible avenue to try and get justice, particularly in the form of accountability for apartheid crimes committed by the banks. One of the main lessons we've learned here is the burning need for an accessible and effective accountability mechanism that can be used by individuals and civil society to bring corporations to account for their role in human rights violations and crimes against humanity. So keep watching this space.